yeah. Put me in the game in general Don't say my name, you're federal I just stay in my lane, I'm hetero How many girls do I got on my phone? Do you mean the second and several? I know that shot you want me for the fame And you want me for Yo, what's good? This is Noah Cuz. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make anthem beats like Wheezy from scratch. I'm going to be breaking down the music theory behind it and show you some of the sounds that I used and then I'm going to show you guys how I made the hard drums. But yeah, this is what the beat sounds like. So first I'm gonna break down the melody, then I'll show you how I made the beat. Make sure you go follow me on Instagram, at Noah Cuz. And one more thing, most of the drum sounds in this are gonna be my drum kit, Noah Cuz Essentials Volume 1. First link in the description. Make sure you guys go cop. But anyway, yeah, let's just get into this loop. All right, so the first sound I used in this was from Session Horns Pro. It's just the default preset, and this is what it sounds like. So it's two simple chords, C minor going into D sharp major or E flat major, however you want to say it. You can see I stacked it with the root note up here. And then on the second chord, I made it a seventh. So for the root notes, I just stacked them two octaves below. And then in the middle of these two chords, I played a bunch of triads. You can see this is just a triad inverted. This is another triad. This is another triad. This is a triad. This is an inverted triad. And then this is also an inverted triad right there. For effects, I added an EQ, sketch cassette, and then this Artoria reverb. So for the next sound, I added this analog lab texture, and this is what it sounds like. All right, so you can see I just followed the root notes for this one. Then in the second half, I stacked an octave on top. So for effects on the texture, I cut out a lot of the lows and highs with this EQ. Next, I added this reverb intensity. For some reason, it's not like loading right, but it's just another Artoria reverb. And then I added this sketch cassette preset, and I think I tweaked some of these settings. So the next sound I added is from Mellotron. For some reason, it's not loading, but it's just a preset in there. And this is what it sounds like. It's just a pad. So for the notes on this pad, I just did the fifth of the chord, and then I brought this up an octave in the second half. For effects, once again, EQ, cutting out a lot of the lows and highs. It's Artoria Reverb that won't load. Sketch Cassette 2, another preset. Like I said, I tweaked some of these. And then Portal with this preset from Steven and Pilgrim's Portal Bank. I brought the mix down on that. So the next sound I added was from Arcade. It's this bank, and these are the notes that I played. These are the effects I added. I added this little altar boy to bring the format down a little bit. Next, I added this EQ. What do you know? Cutting out the lows and the highs. Good Hertz Valve Compressor, just compressing it a little bit. And then this Artoria Reverb, just making it super ambient. After that, I bounced out the vocal and you can see I did all of these chops. Basically, I just cut out this section and then I replaced the other parts with it, like right here, right here right here and right here and I copied that over but wait there's more I used another EQ on it this room reverb but I brought the mix down quite a bit just giving it a little bit of ambience and then I added more reverb back in with this vintage verb I don't know what's up with my plugins not loading but basically I used this volume to make it side chain and then this pan to make it go left and right shaper box is so fire this is what the chopped up vocals sound like I don't know if I mentioned it, but I also reversed this. And then on this last one, I pitched it down. And the last sound I added was this only one texture loop. And this is what it sounds like. I just added this EQ with a super narrow bandpass. 
So once I had all of those, I bounced them out and I got this and then I pitched it down two semitones and I added these master effects, I added this parametric EQ, just boosting some of the lows and then boosting some highs. Next, I added this wow control, just detuning it a little bit. Then I added this midside matrix, just making it super stereo. Then I went for soothe too, just doing some resonance suppression. And then finally this limiter, making it loud. And yeah, this is the final loop. All right, so now I'm back in the beat project file and I'm gonna break down the beat. So I kept it the same BPM, but I actually pitched it back up two semitones to the original pitch. So now it's back in C minor. And yeah, this is what I did for the drums. So first I added this clap. Next, I layered that clap with this snare. After that, I wanted to get this wheezy sort of bounce going, so I added these three snares to like bounce around these claps and snares. So I'm just gonna play what they sound like. I'll show the pattern. So this is what the first one sounds like. I'm gonna play it with the original clap and snare just so that way you get context. This is the second one that I added. And finally, this is the last snare. Then I went for this hi-hat. It's just a four bar pattern repeating. You can see I removed this open hat and then I added a triplet roll right here. I just keep my grid size in one third step for these. Then I just kind of add them in wherever there's space. So you can see I added this roll right here and then I did a short one here and then another short one here. These ones are lower pitched. And this one is also silent, so this could basically be deleted. And then you just copy those over and this is what the hi-hat sounds like. So you probably heard some extra loop rater effects. Basically, I added the shaper box, panning it left and right. Of course, this one's gonna load. And then loop rater, once again, massive on my screen. So I added this reverb on this step and then a vinyl effects on this one. And then I brought the mix down to like 30%. And then I added a reverse right there. Wheezy loves using loop rater on his hi-hats. So if you're trying to get that vibe, make sure you guys get loop rater. So next I added this open hat. Simple, just repeating the same way the entire way through. So for the verse, I switched up the snare into this one. I think that's fire. It's like this cool rim clap type thing. And then finally, the 808. This is what that sounds like. So I just did some basic 808s right here, and then I kind of like doubled them up right there. And you can see I did that a couple times throughout it. This is the only triplet roll that I have in the 808s. The rest of them are just hitting on regular steps. And then I just did this crazy pitch thing. Like if I pitch these all down, you would see. They're all just the same note. You just make them span a few octaves, like this is all the way in the eighth octave, and it sounds fire. I also did this reverse 808, and a lot of people, when they do their reverse 808s, they'll like make a note on the regular 808, and then they'll do Alt U and bring this time knob all the way down there, and then they'll like fade in the velocities. And this is what that sounds like. But personally, I think that kind of sounds like shit. So what I do is I duplicate the 808 and then I just actually reverse it. And then I move the sample start knobs. That way it gets rid of like that transient at the beginning. And then I make sure this is on one beat and then change your time stretching mode to stretch. And you can also mess with the in knob if you want it to fade in a little bit. But if you listen when I play it, it's a much more natural sounding reverse 808. Yeah, that's hard. The last sound I added was this wheezy box. Of course, had to have it, so it makes it a wheezy beat. But yeah, those are basically all of the sounds. For my master preset, you know me, 3.2 on the highs, 1.6 on the mids, and 3.2 on the lows with a fruity parametric EQ going into a default soft clipper. I have my 808 hitting at like around plus one or plus two dB, and then I kind of just level everything else around that. 
I made the stereo separation a little bit wider for the sample, and then I made it like straight up the middle on the 808. I'm gonna go through my drums. You can see I didn't add like any effects on any of these. The only effect I added on this snare was a micro shift because I wanted to make it like super wide. So I used this double preset and I edited some of these controls. But yeah, there's nothing else on the drums besides the hi-hat. What I did do though is I sent a lot of these drums to this reverb channel. And I have two reverbs on here on this beat. I have this Good Hertz Mega Verb with this preset, 100% mix. And then this Vintage Verb, I just brought the decay down and then I brought up the low cut a little bit. You can see I brought that down in the mix and made it more stereo as well. So yeah, for structuring for this, I wanted to keep it super simple. So it goes chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, then outro. Because it's at a lower BPM at 114, this is already getting like close to three minutes back here. So, and yeah, the last thing I added was my tag. One more mixing thing. I have an EQ on the sample and I cut out some of the lows when the 808 comes in, just that way they don't clash. But yeah, that's the entire beat. It's pretty simple to make, but it's super hard. I love the atmosphere that this has and the drums go crazy. It just has a lot of energy in it. But yeah, I hope you guys learned a thing or two. I hope you can take a couple of these tips and put them in your own beats. Go stream Red Lights by MV OJ featuring Split Mind. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. I'm trying to bring you guys like super quality videos. Make sure you guys go follow me on Instagram at NoahCuz and hit me up if you have any questions. But yeah, thank you all for watching. I'm gonna let this beat play out. Peace.